Hello, I'm Amit Lula from AWS. Today, I'll introduce Amazon Bedrock Flows and its new capabilities. Whether you're new to Flows or looking to explore its latest features, this demo will help you understand how to build sophisticated AI workflows without writing code. So let's start with what is Bedrock Flows. Bedrock Flows is a visual builder for creating generative AI workflows. Think of it as an orchestrator for your AI applications, helping you build everything from simple chatbots to complex business workflows. So to show you more details about the flows, when we go into the visual editor, you will see many types of nodes on the left. You have nodes such as prompt nodes for model interactions. You have knowledge base nodes for retrieving information condition node for making decision, lambda function node for custom logic execution, AI services node to connect with AWS AI services, and many other types of nodes. All you have to do is simply drag and drop the node, make the configuration, and then you're able to connect the node with any of these components available on the visual screen. So with general availability, Flows introduces two new capabilities. First, enhance safety with guardrails, and second, enhance traceability. Let's see these in action with the real world scenario. We'll build an intelligent customer service flow for a fictional company, Octank, and we'll name it Octank Customer Service Flow. The description of this is my customer service flow for Octank queries. Once we create the flow, let's understand what will be the components that we want to build. So first we will add a prompt node to be able to interact with the large language model. So we'll define a model And as you can see here for the new capability, once you select a model in the prompt node, you are able to choose an existing guardrail or you can click on go to guardrails and create a new one. For this workflow, interacting with customer queries, we will add a guardrail which is existing called customer service guardrail. What this guardrail does is it will mask customers personally identifiable information such as name and email. So let's first use the prompt node to add a classifier. What we will require this node to do is classify user input into octank for octank company specific queries and generic for general questions only respond with category user and we'll pass the user input which will be input. Now you can see as soon as we added input here, we have enabled one more field. So we will pass the user query and connect it to the input. What we want here after the input and output is connected is to save this flow. Once we've saved the flow, we will try to run a simple query. Hello, help me track status of my tank order. What we are expecting is for this node to identify a category. Okay, so it's correctly identified the category to be octank. Let's try a generic query. What is the population of the UK? As you can see, to the question, what is the population of the UK? It's come back with the category as generic. 
now what we will do is we will add another node which is condition node so that when we have identified a category we can route the request to either retrieve the information from the company sources or to track an order status for Octank and if it's a generic query we will pass it to the large language model prompt node to reply back with an answer. So in the condition node we will add a condition condition input equal to Octank in which case let's add a knowledge base whereby when the condition is chosen as Octank it will go to the knowledge base node I will select an existing knowledge base which has the data for orders as you can see here it consists of order ID the date customer email product name and some information about the shipping method and status now once we've connected the knowledge base we will choose to generate the response based on the retrieve results we can choose a model and we can also apply a guardrail on the node type knowledge base so once we selected this we need to pass the user query as well which is the original query and that we will connect it here to be able to view the response or the output we will connect this to an output node I think the second condition which will be if it's not octank it's a generic condition that is when we want to pass this information to another prompt so we will choose the prompt here we'll select the guardrail and we will enter the information as give um, a synced answer in a professional tone for query input. Once we've connected this, we will again connect the user query to the input and we will finally add an output node. So to visualize this, first we will categorize the information. Once the information has been categorized, we'll pass that to the condition input. Once we have the condition input, it will either be octank or generic. When it's octank, it will flow to the knowledge base, which will retrieve the information and re respond back. And if it's not Octank, it will be generic. If it's generic, it will go to prompt node 2 where we are passing the user input as it is and we are asking it to give us a sync response in professional tone. So we will save this first. Once it is saved, we will test out a few scenarios. Tell me the status of my Octank order, the order ID. Now, if you recollect, one of the new capabilities we've added here is to show the tracing. So to understand which part of the flow was executed in conditions, we will click on show trace. As you can see here, this will give you a lot of information, including the time that it took to execute each node. When we go into the node, it will give us the input and output details and then eventually also the flow that was executed along with the input and output. So the input node had the user query, tell me the status of our Octank order with the order ID. The output node for the first part, which was categorization, came back as Octank, which means it executed the knowledge base node and the output of the knowledge base node was, according to the search results, the status of order is delivered. So the output was passed as it is and the response that we saw at the end of the flow was the same. If we try to run a generic query such as explain AWS VPC 
Now we've explained the show tracing capability. However, if you recollect, we've added guardrails here. So let's try and execute another query to see guardrails in effect. Tell me order details for my octank order with email. Since the guardrails is activated to mask the name and email, we should expect a masked response. As you can see in the response here, the order details for the order with email and the email data has been masked at both places here. So you're able to not only apply the guardrails, but also see the complete execution path via show trace capability, identify active nodes that have been triggered in the flow, check uh, the validation, also debug if there are any errors, and understand which part of your flow is taking the most amount of time. Now we've seen Bedrock Flows, how it helps build secure intelligent AI workflows. From basic query handling to complex routing with safety controls, Flows makes it easier for creating production-ready AI applications. You can access Flows via AWS Management Console or via API Invoke Flow to run your flows on secure serverless infrastructure and quickly deploy at scale or integrate in your AI automation pipeline. My name is Amit Lilla, and for any further questions, please read the documentation, check the blogs that we've published, and contact your AWS team for helping you build your generative AI application with Amazon Bedrock Flows. Thank you.